has owned two clinics offering Christian-based marriage counseling and a host of services, including reparative therapy, which is based on the theory that gay people can be turned into heterosexuals through a combination of prayer and willpower. Nearly all mainstream medical and psychological associations say there's no evidence that it works, and there's plenty of evidence, in fact, that it can be hurtful and harmful. For days now... It was therapy that would help me change from being homosexual to straight. That's how he described it? Yes. He basically said, if you do this, what? You wouldn't be gay anymore. If I did this and worked his therapy program, you know, God could perform a miracle and I could no longer be gay. Involved in the gay and lesbian lifestyle, it's bondage. It is personal bondage, personal despair, and personal enslavement. This is not funny. It's a very sad life. It's part of Satan, I think, to say that this is gay. It's anything but gay. It's profoundly sad to recognize that um, almost all, if not all, individuals who have gone into the lifestyle have been abused one time in their life, either by a male or by a female. An article, what do you say when your teenager says she's gay? What do you say to Christian parents who come up with this? Well, I think you clearly say um, what what is the um, understanding of God's word on homosexuality? And I think that it, this is no mystery that a child or pre-adolescence, particularly adolescents, will, will question um, and wonder about sexuality. That's nothing new on the, under the sun since the beginning of time. Yeah. <laughs> but we sh I don't think we should take that as because we wonder or we think or we question. Does that... Uh, take us down the road of homosexuality. Could you add the word experiment to that? Well, uh, certainly. They, 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 there's, that, that, there's that curiosity. But again, we, we like, you know, it, it is as if we have to understand barbarians need to be educated. They need to be um, disciplined. And just because someone feels it or thinks it doesn't mean that we're supposed to go down that road. I knew from my earliest memory that I was gay. I was, you know, kind of a loner growing up. I was very awkward. Called every name in the book. Mm. They'd say fag or nerd, egghead. You know, like this, like that. You know, people walking by calling me a waste. You know, the mainstream didn't want us. And high school's kind of shitty. <laughs> I mean, it's like... Just there being no allowance for someone to be different. There were, you know, definitely nights those years where I would go to sleep and just be like, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to wake up in the morning. I just wanted to curl up in a dark corner somewhere and hope that it all went away. I felt tired. Really tired. When I, I was around eight, um, I told my pediatrician that um, I wanted to be a girl. It made me feel uh, even more determined to hide that part of myself away because the message I was getting is, you know, that's disgusting. You have all these uh, feelings that you can't necessarily talk about with somebody. You know, and you're looking for that acceptance and you don't always get it. As much as my parents loved me, there was always that possibility that... that the two people that mattered most in my life wouldn't accept me for who I am. And I had this, this kind of story in my mind that everyone was going to lash out at me and they were going to be mad and they were going to say, oh, you're going to hell. And when I thought about that, I became very depressed and I had actually contemplated suicide. Why am I like this? I wish I wasn't. I um, uh, found a bottle of sleeping pills in my parents' medicine cabinet and took them. All of them. Just a few moments before I lost consciousness, I had a fleeting moment where I thought, if it does get better and I'm gone, then I've really screwed up. Every day is worth waking up for. You never know what's going to happen. Life changes so much. When I finally did come out uh, and start to transition, I realized I'd been hiding a huge part of myself. And it just came out. I said, I'm gay. It feels like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders. And that was just incredibly liberating. I'm finally me. 
no way would I not want to be who I am because my uniqueness is my strength. It's what differentiates me from other people. To finally be open and honest with who I am, what I want out of life, and to my surprise, it was probably one of the best things that I'd ever done. You feel every sense of freedom and um, every sense of this is what life is all about. Summer days at the park where all your friends are there and going on a long run when no one else is on the street. The thrill of, of discovering what your career is or even just being here to see the sunset or the sunrise. I have people I really enjoy talking with, being with, doing stuff. Enjoying the riches of life. That's, that's the stuff that people shouldn't miss out on. Falling in love and having a partner of almost 14 years. We both play the piano. Um, he plays the viola. And someone who every night you want to say, um, I love you and I hope you sleep well. That feeling of connecting to someone so deeply. And sometimes I still shake my head, think I'm, it's, I'm dreaming, because it's, it got so much better than, that I ever thought it would be possible. Just, there's no way that anyone can really, really explain that to you until you really feel it. But if you're not around, you, you won't. Don't try to do everything yourself. Find people who can help you if you can. As difficult as it might seem, open up with somebody and just tell them what you're feeling. You have to be open to people who even look like they might be your friend. They're friends. You're not alone. You're not alone. The bullies seem like the powerful people and the successful people. And the secret of the real world is they're at the peak of their power at 15 and 16. And there will come a time when the bullies are not successful and the people they bullied are. And you just have to out-survive them. They don't know you. They don't know who you are or what you love or anything about you. Know that there's nothing wrong and there's people out there just like you. Please consider that time, just a little bit of time sometimes, changes a whole outlook. No matter who you are or where you live or what you have swirling around you, that space that you're in, that time, is this much in the course of life. And as we go through our lives, we're going to have friends, we're going to have family, but they're not always there. And in that toughest, darkest moment, if we can rely on ourselves, that's more than we will ever need to face the world.